Alright guys, so today's lesson, uh, today's lecture is about political parties. It's not super long. Today we're just talking about the two main political parties um, in the United States, the Republican and Democrat. Tomorrow we'll, we will look more at third parties that don't have as much as a, of a role but are still important in American politics. So again, you should be taking notes. Um, you can be taking notes on your own paper. I provided you with a guided note sheet that you can use for like Google Docs that are on the assignment. Um, again, I don't check your notes for completion, but when it comes to having quizzes and whatnot, it will be useful to have them, especially with our benchmarks and our final exams. So a couple of quick vocab terms that are important to understand before we talk about political parties. Um, we see these terms thrown around a lot. And something that is important to note is that these terms are universal. So when we talk about liberal conservative and their general definitions, these are the definitions of liberal and conservative around the world. So we're going to apply them to our own political parties and you know, specifics may look different everywhere, but when we talk about the word liberal, it translates to left or left leaning or left wing, okay? Um, so when you hear things like, oh, the left is doing this, they, they're talking about the more liberal or democratic in our case people. Um, if someone has a liberal ideology, they tend to favor more government involvement in citizens' lives. So this could be through education or health care, um, anything of that sort. But it's the idea that the government is, is intervening in people's lives to provide usually social programs for the betterment of the people. Um, this obviously requires more government spending. Um, and Liberals tend to value equality, that everyone is uh, equal or has equal opportunity to succeed. Um, again, that, that definition of liberal is, is true universally. So, you know, if you study Mexico's government and they're going to have a liberal party, a liberal meaning left wing or a party that favors government involvement. Specifics might look different, but generally means the same thing. So conservative is the opposite. It means right wing. So if you're like the right is doing this or the far right, which well, we're not really going to get to the far right, but um, the conservative uh, conservatives tend to oppose government involvement. So they approach government more as like a hands off that the government there is, to, is there to keep order and should not be tasked with providing uh, things like health care for their citizens, that it should be um, more private health care system in that sense. That's just an example. So again, we can talk about conservatives universally and countries you know, we talk about the UK, the Conservative Party. It's going to have generally the same ideas of less government involvement, but it might look different depending on what country you're in. Um, so in terms of the history of our political parties here in the United States, in Washington's farewell address, this might be something that you already know, but George Washington in his farewell address after he decided not to run for president again, um, basically said, warned the country against political parties or factions that would divide the country. Um, and you can read it yourself, but basically he says, um, if we divide ourselves into political parties, it's only, only going to cause chaos and nothing will get done. And imagine that he was right. Um, so really the first semblance of political parties comes um, kind of with the Federalists and Anti-Federalists, but even after that, um, you have uh, Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton, who are major players in an American government disagreeing on uh, economics, basically how 
you know, we should pay for the war, how, what state involvement should be. So Jefferson believed more um, in giving more power to the states, that the states should control their own uh, economics and should take care of their own debt and shouldn't have to take on the debt of other states. Hamilton argued that they needed a strong central government with a, with a national bank um, that states would pay into that would help pay off the debt in order for uh, America to become a, a stable country. Um, and so that's kind of the first semblance of political parties where you have two different sides, especially when it comes to economics. So uh, the Democratic Party, let me see. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the Democratic Party, which is represented by the donkey, began as um, the Democratic Republicans. So this was Thomas Jefferson's original party. So again, when we're talking about states' rights, that would be seen as a more conservative, or giving more power to the states, seen as a more conservative ideology. And so early on, what we call the Democratic Party they were the more conservative party and that's kind of flipped. So um, <clears throat> so really some people say it started with Thomas Jefferson, the Democratic Republicans. Others say it started with Andrew Jackson um, during you know, his first election of 1828. Again, the, de the original Democratic party stood for small government, limited federal powers, federal involvement, and a strict interpretation of the Constitution. So early on, these would be considered the anti-federalists. The Republican Party, which is uh, represented by the elephant, um, you'll often hear it called the GOP, which stands for Grand Old Party. Okay, so GOP is means Republican Party. So this was formed really in the in the 1850s and was originally an anti-slavery party. Abraham Lincoln is considered the first Republican president. So again, you're thinking, well, wasn't Abraham Lincoln kind of a little bit more liberal? And you you would be correct in your thinking. Um, originally stood for bigger government, more federal powers, more loose interpretation of the Constitution. So over time, these parties have flipped and they really flipped um we're not really going to get into history of political parties because it's not super fascinating unless you're into that but essentially um you at some point in your schooling career should have learned about the new deal and fdr um and so fdr <clears throat> was a democrat but the New Deal basically expanded the federal government's power exponentially. And so what happened was that a lot of um, Democrats who, especially Southern Democrats, who didn't agree with what FDR was doing, switched to the Republican Party. And a lot of Republicans who did agree with what FDR was doing switched to Democrats. And so really in the 1920s and 30s is when we get the switch in ideologies between the parties. Uh, you might be wondering why there are animals that represent the party. Um, so again, the Democratic donkey was first associated with Andrew Jackson, um, one of his opponents in his um, 1828 campaign called him a jackass, and Jackson decided, well, a ja an ass, which is a donkey, is a strong-willed animal, and so I'm a strong-willed person, and so he decided to use the donkey on his campaign posters. Um, and so then it just kind of came to represent by cartoonist Thomas Nast, uh, uh, the Democratic Party. The elephant was also made famous by Thomas Nast, um, essentially in a political cartoon that he drew. Um, he drew a bunch of animals, um, the donkey and lion skin, and one of those animals was an elephant. And on the elephant, it, the elephant was labeled the Republican vote. And so from then on out, people just associated the elephant with the Republican Party. 
So in terms of what these today, what these parties uh, support or believe, again, these are very broad um, ideas. We can see today, like politics has become even more polarized. And so even when we talk about these things, they may be true for most Republicans, but not all Republicans, or most all Democrats, but not all Democrats. Most Democrats, but not all Democrats. Um, and so these are generally what these parties support. So today's Democrats are more liberal, okay, socially liberal, meaning they support more government involvement in the social elements of life, and fiscally liberal, meaning they support more government spending. Um, so it, the general idea is that the role of the federal government is to ensure that everyone has the opportunity to succeed and everyone has equal access to, to opportunity. So this could mean public health care. We see with Obama, for example, the Affordable Care Act, um, or Obamacare is the same thing. Um, the idea that the government should be providing health care to those who cannot get it. Uh, more increase in education spending by the federal government, more increase in public works programs that would provide jobs. Uh, obviously, these programs cost a lot of money. So Democrats generally believe that increasing taxes is okay, as long as the money that is being um, taxed is going towards um, to benefit the society as a whole. So that means Democrats generally favor higher taxes, especially on businesses like large corporations and uh, the more wealthy. Um, I think that's called progressive tax, where the more you, the more income you have, the more taxes you pay. Um, so some famous Democrats, um, you have President Obama, uh, Clinton, JFK, uh, FDR. And then Republicans, kind of seen as the opposite of that. So they're more conservative, both socially and fiscally. So that means that socially, they kind of view it as either more a state's problem or an individual's problem when it comes to social things like healthcare. And that's not the job of the government to provide that for people. Uh, they're also fiscally conservative, so don't like a lot of government spending except on the military. Okay. Um, really, in the 1970s until today, the Republican Party has been associated with um, more conservative Christians. So, you know, there's a whole history behind why that happened, but um, often associated with. Um, more religious, religious people. Um, the historically Republicans have been focused on more states' rights. That's not necessarily true, really. Now, some, some, in some aspects, it is, but um, you know, Republicans typically oppose more government spending, especially on welfare programs. Again, the one exception to government spending is uh, the military. Um, <clears throat> Republicans support lower taxes on everyone, uh, but especially they don't believe that businesses or the wealthy should be paying a lot more than, you know, the middle or lower middle income. Um, some famous Republicans, Richard Nixon, Reagan, Bush, both Bushes, Trump, obviously. Um, again, it's really hard especially now because I, I would argue and probably a lot of other people would argue that Trump doesn't really fit the the typical Republican that we've seen in the past. Um, and a lot of Republicans and a lot of Democrats don't, you know, it's very hard to put them in two, two just two piles. There's, there's a lot more ideas that are represented, but they're not labeled that way because we only have a two-party system. And like I said, tomorrow we'll talk about some third parties that, you know, a lot of their ideas are incorporated in our government, but they don't necessarily get representation in our government.